It's about gratitude. And I like this quote that Dr. Moore sent, sent to us. Uh, gratitude is a, va is a vaccine, an antitoxin, and an antiseptic. And really, I was going through a lot of quotes that I've had on gratitude, and I, it's, so, it's so interesting how uh, philosophers, thinkers of the past have placed such a huge premium on the act of giving thanks. And I really can't think of anyone, anyone better than uh, Dr. Moore, uh, who has been a very good friend and a great supporter of what we're doing. And so I am so grateful to have her back. She did an excellent job on quality of life. That's on our website as well. But uh, I would like you all to welcome Dr. Moore as soon as Sherry has read her bio and introduced introduced her. And also, Sherry is going to be pretty much being the host, be the host tonight. You're going to go back and forth. So, Sherry, go ahead. Okay. Dr. Lori Moore graduated from Baylor Law School with honors and has been focused for almost 20 years on maximizing opportunities and systems for the maximum benefit of her clients and business partners. Her business endeavors have not only included a successful law practice, but also the establishment and management of multiple creative and profitable sales and service businesses, in addition to serving as a judge in West, West Texas. Whenever I read that, it almost sounds like, and in her spare time, she was a judge in West Texas. Um, as a network marketing industry and nutrition law consultant and professional educator, Dr. Moore is highly respected as a forward thinker and innovative strategist in helping healthcare professionals, corporate executives, and consumers to take proactive control of their quality of life, including their financial destiny. There's lots of uh, th awards that she's earned, and just she just has a very um, broad and wonderful background. And one of the things I think is most important that she's done is she's also a mother of four children. And uh, when, on her bio, that's listed last. I think we should move that up to the top, Lori. I agree. <laughs> well, welcome. We're so thankful to have you here tonight. Well, as always, it's my joy. And um, I can tell you guys, working with these two individuals has really been an incredible experience in my life. So I just want to start out this session saying, um, that's the thing I'm most grateful for at this moment is just that during the past few days and weeks and getting to put this subsequent webinar together that I've gotten to spend some time with Sherry and I've gotten to um, exchange conversations with my dear friend David. And so, guys, I just want to say thank you to you guys first for who you are, yeah, who you are in my life and, and just the joy that you bring to so many people. And, David, I'm going to get you to um, you know, put your doctor's hat on for me. And you mentioned the quote that I sent you there. That uh, do you, do you still have that? Sure. Uh, you, you want to, you need me to take back control and show it? Um, or... No, just just I, I want people to just listen and focus in on what it says. It, it's talking about gratitude, and what does it say? It says gratitude is, is a vaccine. And a vaccine. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you. What does a vaccine do? It uh, prevents certain disease, diseases, diseases, okay. I guess. And then it goes on to say gratitude is? An antitoxin. And what does an antitoxin do? An antitoxin, uh, when, the, when like, it neutralizes a toxin, maybe from snake venom or cobra or uh, scorpion bite, whatever. And, I mean, if you were to, if you were to just venture, I guess, which I, I know you know, but in, in today's society, what is, the, what is one of the greatest generators of a toxic effects on the body? I would say stress. I would agree. You know, I, I kind of uh, laughed the other day. Uh, it's been several years back, actually, when, you know, you're going in and getting your health update and, and, and talking with your doctor. And my doctor is an incredible friend and wonderful man who happens to be a psychologist as well as an MD, or a DO, rather. And so he said to me, you know, do you have any stress in your life? <laughs> and I just looked at him and I said, is that a serious question? You know, um, because as Sherry said, my, my highest and greatest joy is, is my four children. And how in the world a mother of four children could state with a straight face that she has no stress in her life, you know, <laughs> is beyond me. But, uh, so yeah, gratitude is an antitoxin. And then lastly, what does the quote say? And an uh, antiseptic. An antiseptic. What, what does that convey? Uh, well, it 
it, it prevents the toxins from getting in your body in the first place. I guess it, uh, it cleans, it's a cleaning agent and um, prevents infection, I guess. Exactly. So, you know, what, what are the odds? What are the odds that you could have one substance, one item that could accomplish simultaneously all of those three things? Not, not real high in the medical community, I would say. Um, right. You know, and, and if you were going to get them, i got to tell you, um, I think you're going to be charged a premium, wouldn't you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, here's the, here's the fascinating, fascinating uh, research about the topic that we're sitting tonight. And this is what it, the psychology of gratitude, which I've al also called um, gratefulology, just to have a little fun with it. Uh, and here's one of the quotes, one of the starting quotes. Religion and philosophy have long embraced gratitude as an indispensable component of health, wholeness, and well-being. Now, well-being is, a, is a, actually a term of art, um, has a very specific definition, and basically is, is equated to the topic that you know is near and dear to my heart, which you just heard Sherry reference, which is quality of life. So if you're looking at a, a person's overall well-being, you're looking at their quality of life. And you've heard me talk before that you know, there are various components of quality of life. But here is what this researcher had to say. He's a scientist. Um, he says, you know, religion and philosophy got it long ago, but science has come a bit late to the concept. This is Dr. Robert Emmons from the UC Dake, from the University of California at Davis. And he's really one of the gratitude research pioneers. He is really well known in the, in the positive psychology movement, the pos positive psychology community. Uh, and in fact, Dr. David and I were discussing this earlier, he's, he's been primarily funded by an incredible gentleman by the name of, of Sir John Templeton. Um, and Sir John Templeton, as many of you may know, um, was an incredibly successful businessman, an incredibly wealthy businessman as a result of his success, and also became I believe, uh, the finest philanthropist ever to have blessed the planet uh, because he just really did so much good with the wealth that he generated. Not only did he do good while he was here, um, he died relatively recently, uh, but he created foundations, which Dr. Dave pointed out to me earlier in our conversation. Um, the amount of the awards for the Templeton Award um, is second only in prestige to the Nobel Prize. So that gives you an idea of, uh, and, and I want you guys to just to absorb that. Because I think it's important when we're looking at, you know, here's my goal for you guys. Here's my goal for everyone whose path I cross. And that is really, I want the best for you. I want maximum quality of life for you. So if you're, you know, if you're satisfied with good, if you're satisfied with okay, then that can be your choice. But I truly believe with every fiber of my being that each one of us are entitled to the maximum quality of life that we can enjoy in our earthly bodies. So it's really exciting when I look at this concept of gratitude. Because here's what Oxford University Press has to say about it. Being grateful to others has been demonstrated as a quality which enhances well-being, remember, quality of life in life. I call it a quality of life booster shot. Um, and here's the cool thing about that. You know, tons of controversy swirling around the world about, uh, Sherry, what, what, is, what particular immunization is, is right in the forefront of the news these days? Oh, the swine flu. Ah, yes, the swine flu vaccine. Incredibly controversial no proven benefits, and one of the things that, um, quite frankly, just truly, truly gets under my skin about that vaccination is a concept called, which I know has been covered on these webinars, but it's, in, it, it's incredibly important, and, and that is a concept called informed, informed consent. And so what we have is an unproven technology that has, lo has known toxic effects, that has not been tested on any population that's being rushed into the market because of a perceived crisis. Um, the crisis itself has not been documented. The statistics are intentionally and knowingly um, altered and grouped in ways that creates uh, alarm. And so guys, you know, here we have a situation where 
there, there's this this run to to judgment on a topic that really doesn't have now now certainly don't hear me wrong on this anyone who gets an illness and um, and feels the impact of any disease whether it's Lyme flu flu cancer or any other disease deserve our full compassion uh, but to create crisis over that situation really is putting the focus in the wrong place as Sherry said you know what you magnify grows larger um, and I really really believe that this, in fact, Robert Emmons, the gratitude researcher, points out that, that gratitude is the unappreciated stepchild of all of the interventions that exist. Because here's what he discovered in his, his research. Funded by Dr. John Templeton out of the University of California, Davis, and also jointly with the researcher at Florida University. And again, the reason that I'm mentioning these is because that does add a layer of credibility. You know, the research that I'm looking at, again, I'm an attorney, I was a, I'm a former judge. I want to know that the research that's being conducted is reliable and accurate. I want to know that the people conducting the research are doing it for the right reasons, not because they're funded by the company who um, is promoting the product. Now, here's an interesting concept to think about gratitude, isn't it? Who, who do you think would benefit if someone found a positive effect of gratitude? I mean, who would that be? The smiley face guy? You know? <laughs> I'd love to think about that because you have, you have a built-in credibility factor, okay? Because, honestly, you can't bottle gratitude, can you? No. It's not something that I can take and put into a pill and sell on the marketplace. And, and one of the, if you guys have heard me speak before in a webinar, the four the four primary categories of quality of life are these. Number one is health, and proactively, I call that wellness. Number two is finances. Again, proactively, I like to refer to that as prosperity. Number three is relationships, and what we can do about that is, is developing personal character. And then number four is happiness. And probably the highest rated quadrant of quality of life is happiness. And people are looking constantly on a daily basis to try to find happiness. Do you know of any other single factor that can increase happiness by 25%? Guys, I don't want you to discount this information because it seems so simple. Because this is the science. You see, Here's, here's the, the interesting point that some of the happiness research points out. There seems to be what's called a happiness set point. And basically, everyone is predisposed genetically to have a certain level of happiness. But here's what's interesting about that. Only 20%, if you've heard me discuss before, only 20% of our quality of life is determined by genetics. So the other 80% is actually determined by our own individual life choices, what we do with that. So the truth is that you can actually engage in behaviors that improve your positivity or your, your optimism, your outlook on life. And that has an impact on your quality of life, okay? But here's what the research also shows, and this is a fascinating study. Um, you see me reference a lottery winner and the victim of a, of a debilitating accident who becomes a quadriplegic. Now, who would... Th those are, those are life events on opposite ends of the spectrum, wouldn't you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's what the science says about those two very, very stressful life events. Because, you know, even, even great happiness is a stress, you know. If I won $30 million in the lottery, there's a stress associated with that, isn't there? Okay. Now, uh, all of us would say, <laughs> you know, that's a Pick stress. I'd, I'd like, on. exactly, Sherry sure, said, you know, give me that stress, I'll deal yeah. with it, okay? Yeah. But, yeah. but here's the fascinating part about the science, is that six months following that incident, if you study those categories of individuals, if there is no further intervention other than just that life event, their happiness returns to exactly the same level that it was. Okay? So if they were a happy person before, they're a happy person then. 
if they were a negative person before, then guess what? It doesn't matter if they got $30 million, they're a negative person again. And how many people probably say, oh, I would only be happy if? Precisely, precisely. And this, this is, you know, th this is the yin and the yang, the flip sides of the coin about the study of happiness, okay? Is you want to, you want to say, if only, if only this happens, I can be happy. So it, it, it's like a quest and you want to, you're, everyone's searching for it and going after it. But here's what the science says. The science says that it's really in you. Okay, now you can develop it in you, but it's, it's really not dependent on those external circumstances. So how in the world can gratitude increase happiness by 25%? Well, here again is some other research showing how truly amazing gratitude is and its physical and psychosocial benefits. I love this one from Dr. Blair and Rita Justice uh, from the University of Texas in Houston. A growing body of research shows that gratitude benefits are so great, in fact, that it's a wonder gratitude gyms aren't already being franchised. Okay? Remember me talking about how you couldn't really bottle gratitude and create a commodity that could be sold on the market? Right. Well, this is what doc the doctor's justice were saying, is that if it could, it could have the single greatest benefit and impact on quality of life of any, anything currently known. Here's what Psychology Today says, call it corny, but gratitude just may be the glue that holds society together. <laughs> so David, you were pointing out, you know, some of this quote unquote soft science or soft activity, soft intervention. Now here's how I feel about that. Uh, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, the softer the better, because when you hit me with something, I want to be able to endure it, you know? <laughs> and if you hit me with a Nerf ball, I like that a lot better than if I get hit by a baseball going 98 miles per hour, you know? Right, right. And some of those hard interventions, and you'll hear me talk about this later in the discussion, guys, they, they take an incredible toll on the body. I mean, I have dear friends, doctors, just like you, David, who, whose great sorrow in life is that they have a heart to help. They took a Hippocratic, Hippocratic oath. Um, they, they have pledged to at first do no harm, and yet the very interventions under, West, under the Western medical paradigm cause such great damage to the body, it can often lead to death as a side effect. Mm. Now that's hard, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, just, you just don't get any harder than that. But here, this real simple thing called thank you. This is the research project on gratitude and thankfulness. You heard me talk about Dr. Robert Emmons from UC Davis. He's the one that conducted this study. It was 10 weeks long. And here were the study conditions, okay? The gratitude condition was a certain group of undergraduates were told to write down five things you're grateful for. Pretty simple. The next group were put under what they called the hassles condition. And they were told, write down five hassles from your past week. And then the control group. They were just told to write about five events that occurred during the past week, not negative or positive, weren't given any direction on that. Just write down any five events that occurred during the past week. And you might have been curious, so I actually did a little digging and found what were some of the sample gratitude conditions. Now guys, remember, Okay, as we're looking at these sample conditions, these were the conditions when written down created a 25% improvement measurable in happiness. Watching a sunset through the clouds. The generosity, the generosity of friends. The chance to be alive. <laughs> now that one, I suspect, was actually inspired by Thoreau. Uh, some of you may know his quotes, because what he said was, the one thing that you should do every day is give thanks that you were born. Just give thanks that you were born. So those were some of the sample gratitude conditions. 
Well, you might ask, what were some of the hassle conditions that were listed? Well, they were pretty severe. I mean, I'm going to show you here. These are some pretty serious things, things like taxes, okay? Things like having a hard time finding a parking space, okay? Anybody experience that? <laughs> and this last one is pretty gripping, pretty life-altering, pretty doggone frustrating. I burned my <laughs> macaroni and cheese, okay? So those were some of the literal hassle conditions. But what I think is cool about that is those are real, aren't they? <laughs> you know? I mean, Sherry, I know you're a, perfectal, a perfectly wonderful wife, um, so I'm sure you've never messed up a meal, right? <laughs> well, at least not macaroni and cheese. Well, there you go. <laughs> See? So that's something to be grateful for, right? Well, in our house, we actually used to have, uh, bless my sweet, sweet mother, uh, I had two brothers who, you know, which is one of the reasons why I think I get credit for being good. It's just in comparison to them, okay? Uh, but they used to say that we knew dinner was ready when the smoke alarm went off. <laughs> uh, so did we have this sample ha hassle condition in our house? Yeah, we did. And probably, frankly, there was some macaroni and cheese in there at one time. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I need to tell you that, you know, I, being the loving child that I was, followed in my mother's footsteps. And before I even left high, high school, actually set my kitchen on fire. So, um, you know, I, I can't point fingers without having them point back at me. But here, according to this one long-term study, actually there were three. He did one study and then two follow-up and confirmatory studies. But this study on the power of gratitude, practicing gratefulness on a regular basis causes the following, what I like to call, happy side effects, you know. Uh, I talk a lot uh, when I've trained people around the world about about side effects and about the incredible damage that this, this uh, pharmaceutical paradigm has caused because, um, again, you're putting a controlled toxin into your body and the resulting effect on your body can be so drastic as to cause death. But, but even if it doesn't cause death, it frequently causes so many painful and debilitating side effects that you have to take other medications to deal with those. Well, what a cool shift. What if we can focus in on some happy side effects? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, here's one of them. Gratitude creates joy. In a survey of American teenagers and adults, 95% felt at least somewhat happy when expressing gratitude. And over half felt extremely happy. So I, want, I want you to think about that for a minute, because the importance of that point is it's a chicken or the egg kind of argument. Okay. Well, they were happy first, and that's why they expressed gratitude. No, what this says is, regardless of your beginning emotional state, when you make an intentional effort to express gratitude, you feel happier. Okay? It also has an ongoing effect. Grateful people are more energetic and optimistic, more empathic. That means they really connect with other people and feel where they are. And get this, they're less vulnerable to clinical depression. Right back to your point, Sherry, what we focus on magnifies. What else does gratitude do? Well, this is kind of building on the joy concept. <laughs> I use the phrase, life is good. <laughs> because grateful people tend to be satisfied with what they have, and so they're less susceptible to such emotions as disappointments, regrets, and frustration. Sherry, it gets back to the point that you were talking about. People are always looking for that thing to make them happy. If I only get this, if I only get the raise, if I could only find a better mate, if I could only get my teenager out of the house, you know? And so when you're focused on that, when you're so overwhelmed with the negatives, then life isn't so good, is it? But when you focus in on the positives, when you express gratitude and look for things, the old song that says, count your blessings, well, again, like Dr. Dr. Emmons points out, religion got it right a long time ago. Because when you do name them one by one, and you will be delighted what the Lord has done, is what the song says. Well, life is good. Because when you focus in on gratitude, 
People who are grateful are less materialistic and more focused on meaning and relationships. In other words, the things that actually improve the quality of life. What else does gratitude do? It promotes good health. You'll enjoy better physical and mental health just, get this, just by focusing on being grateful for as little as two minutes a day. Wow. 120 seconds of gratitude will give you better physical and mental health. Okay? Now the key here is that you really need to focus on it. You really need to stop and hone in on what it is you're being grateful for. And we're actually I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit further into our discussion. There's actually a measurable boost to the immune system. Some of the research actually um, took some blood tests and measured the impact of gratitude on the immune system. And there was a boost when people focused in on, again, as little as two minutes a day, up to 15 minutes a day. Now, Sherry, do you think if you could improve your, improve your happiness by 25% that you might give it two minutes? I think I just might. In fact, I think I read something earlier today that said there's, we have like 86,000 seconds or a minute a day or seconds a day. And you know, when you think how many minutes are in your day, what small percentage two minutes is, is really small. Exactly. You know, and time is that commodity that everyone has exactly the same amount of. You know? Bill Gates doesn't have an extra minute in there that we don't have. Mm. You know? The president doesn't have an extra minute where he somehow crams in the stuff that he wants to get done. He has exactly the same amount of time as we do. It's simply an issue of how we choose to spend it. Lori, has anybody ever studied or looked at the, if you were around grateful people? That, oh. if that has Because you know, we, we're seeing how it would, be, like if I'm grateful, how that benefits me, but if I'm grateful, how that benefits those around me. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's huge, huge, huge. In fact, you're, you're cheating on me a little bit because that's, that's, you know, that's, that's my punchline later towards the end. But yeah, we're going to talk about that because that was probably the result that fascinated the researchers. It was the most unexpected result and the most powerful result, according to Dr. Emmons and others. So yeah, we're going to get to that. Um, a very, very good point. But here, here's another point about expressing or promoting good health, expressing gratitude is one of the fastest ways to pull yourself out of a slump, okay? And it's counterintuitive, it feels like. Okay, if I'm feeling bad, if I'm, if I'm feeling like junk, why in the world do I want to put on a happy face and look on the sunny side of life? Well, again, uh, you don't have to. You can, you can choose to wallow in your mire if you want, you know? I'm just pointing this out to you because I want better for you. You know, we, I, I actually have a ritual with my little 8-year-old son, and, you know, a great trauma can happen when you're, oh, I'm, excuse me, I am going to be penalized for that. He just turned 9. <laughs> so my now 9-year-old son. Um, and we have a ritual because, you know, when you're 9, traumatic things can happen, such as if you're a Lego connoisseur and you've gone to great pains to put together the 732-piece new Star Wars Legos kit, and the pieces fall off. Okay? Now that's trauma for a nine-year-old, okay, because you spend hours on that. Well, when you go to bed and you're focused on that trauma, what kind of sleep are you going to have? Not the kind that you deserve, okay? So what we do is we literally have, we have a little gratitude session, and we talk about, you know, what makes me happy? What makes me happy is, and we just go through this back and forth, little ping-pong game while we're lying in bed and I'm sucking him in. What makes me happy is, what makes me smile is, I'm thankful for, and guys, you know, it doesn't take but five or ten times back and forth with that for that little guy to be going to sleep with a smile. Here, here's something else that gratitude does, and this is powerful. Gratitude actually enhances emotional healing, because here's the thing, life happens. Life brings junk, doesn't it? to every single one of us. And, and I, you know, even, even the supermodel out there with no hair ever out of place, perfect makeup, perfect outfit, I know the truth. Somewhere behind the scenes she's having trouble, okay? That's just reality. But grateful people have this resilience. They have this ability that even when junk happens, they examine it 
maybe not precisely in that moment, because when tragedy strikes, maybe you can't do it that second. But they have the ability to go back and look at it again with fresh eyes and let the brain fully process what happened and then find something in that to be grateful for. Because you see, when they do that, they achieve closure by making sense of those negative events so that they mesh with the generally positive outlook that they have in their life. That's powerful. Great gratitude also inspires success. If you're a grateful person, you'll be more likely to work towards your personal goals. This was actually carried out in several studies. And the people that were grateful, that expressed gratitude for other people in their lives, for the conditions of their lives, for the state of their lives, no matter what it was, they were more likely to achieve and make positive progress towards work goals, relationship goals, school goals, etc. They were also more alert. They were much more enthusiastic. They were definitely more determined. And they were more attentive. Now look at those, look at those character characteristics there. Look at those character traits. Are those ones that you would like to have uh, in, in your pursuit of your life's journey? Absolutely. Would you, I mean, you know, those are, those are characteristics I'd look if I was hiring someone, Sherry, mm -hmm. you know? And all of that, all of that comes from 2 to 15 minutes a day of gratitude. Gratitude makes you a better person. You know, if you want to be the friend that everybody wants to have, then express your gratitude. Because when you do, your friends see you as more generous and helpful. It doesn't matter if you really are. <laughs> The study actually, this particular study actually looked at it. You didn't actually increase your generosity or helpfulness at all. You just said thank you to the person. And they perceived you as more generous and helpful. Mm. We've already covered this a little bit. Um, when you are grateful, you're less envious of others. And, and this is a huge one um, that I cover with my kids. Because I've got to tell you, in our society, I think we see less and less of this. And it's a character trait that I love to put the spotlight on. And when I see it, I just well up with joy and love and gratitude. And that is when you see another human being delighting in the success of someone else. Have you seen that, Sherry? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? And, and, and when I experience those moments, when I'm working closely with a coaching client or when I have a friend or a family member or someone that I'm mentoring and I see them have a breakthrough, wow. You know, those are the moments where I can literally feel happier for their success than I would for my own. And, man, gratitude just builds into this spiral of good. Because, see, then it creates that... I mean, you know what, I, I feel kind of selfish because when I get that feeling, when I'm grateful for their success, then I want more of that, you know? <laughs> wow, let me help someone else because that really felt good, you know? And here, boy, this is a big one. Um, you know, my friend laughed when he saw this. Helps with a good night's sleep. He, he told me, you need to be more grateful for me then. You need to work on this because he knows I'm... I'm just constantly processing. My brain will not shut down. But here is the interesting thing about gratitude as a sleeping pill. Um, when you express gratitude, when you are by nature a grateful person, or when you intentionally work on becoming more grateful, you will, one, sleep better at night, and two, feel more energetic during the day. Mm. Now, how many millions of dollars are spent on sleeping pills <laughs> in this country? And, you know, frankly, all over the world. And who knew that a simple thank you could accomplish that? This is a great one. Now, this is really going to get to the scientists that are out there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you guys that really want the heart science, take a look at this. This comes from the Institute of Heart Math. Appreciation creates resonance, rhythmic alignment of the heart, breathing, blood pressure, and brain rhythm. I get this. So you see, guys, these... These studies were done with people tied up to electrodes, okay? So the machines were spitting out those charts, those comparison charts, right? And here's what the chart showed. Just five minutes of gratitude shifts neurological and endocrine system into an ordered state of calm. <laughs> five 
minutes of gratitude had a measurable impact on the neurological and endocrine system. That's huge. That's amazing. So this is another one you're going to love. Dr. David, this, you know, um, in fact, with just with this, this first statistic just blew my mind. Gratitude actually reduces stress on the body. You remember we talked about the number one toxin in our society today is the immeasurable stressors that we have both in our environment and in our minds. You know, it's just such a fast-paced world. Guys, look at this. One month of daily 15-minute practice of appreciation created a 100% increase in DHEA. <laughs> now, I know there are people on this call because I know some of you who have had a fascination with DHEA, who have studied DHEA, who have gone through incredible gyrations to get more DHEA or precursors of DHEA into your body. David, why would you want more DHEA? Well, DHEA, is, that's, that's a building block for some of the uh, most powerful um, endocrine hormones in the body. Um, everything from estrogen to the good estrogen now, the testosterone, and uh, they, they really help to keep heavy your body function a lot better. Um, it cools, settles your nervous system, your adrenal glands. It counteracts cortisol in, some, in many ways, which is a stress hormone, which, is, which damages the body when it, in excess. Exactly. And, and you know, here, here's what's happened when, when I've worked with people and I've experienced um, clients who have increased their level of DHEA naturally. And, and frankly, the story that I like to tell is it's usually the men who are most grateful <laughs> because really? they, oh, well, of course, because they'll say to me, you know, ever since my wife increased her DHEA, well, whatever it is that you're doing to help her, don't ever stop. <laughs> Because she is so much more pleasant to be around. No. She really enjoys life more. So is no the more voice breaks, huh? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and seriously, it, it, as you know, male and female need that hormonal balance. But mm -hmm. it really is the men who say, wow, that, that's good stuff. That's some good stuff right there. And who knew that that good stuff could be increased 100% by merely spending 15 minutes a day appreciating. Okay. Wow. But, but here, here, here's an interesting thing I want to challenge you about. In today's society, how many of you on this call, and, and, and I'm challenging you here, okay? Guys, listen to this. How many of you can say that you would pause for 15 minutes in gratitude? How many of you could honestly say you could put the stopwatch on and let it run for 15 minutes without driving yourself crazy thinking about something else. <laughs> Makes me wonder what would happen if you did it for a whole hour. I incredible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Norman Vincent Peale, who's um, one of my heroes, incredible mentor to me, he and, and I have as well, I've been, been to Japan several times, and he talks about some of the customs that they have. <laughs> And, and this is really cool. I just want to mention this here while we're talking about pausing and spending the time in gratitude. He says they have what they call a wood-burning party, where they take several different kinds of wood, they sit outside in nature, and they burn them one after another in this small stove called a brazier. And the, and the idea is that you have a group of people in community just sitting around and savor the aroma of the wood. And then someone will tell the gathered guests something along these lines. This wood came from the high mountains. This wood struggled with the elements. It has had to fight to live. And Dr. Peel says, you know, when you're, you're in that moment in Japan and you're, you're part of that culture, he says, you really sense the qualities in that aroma. And someone else might speak up about another piece of wood, because remember, these are different types of wood. This wood came from the seashore, where it was cleaned each day by the ocean spray. And you get the freshness of that sea air and the aroma of the burning wood. Kind of reminds me of the people that are wine connoisseurs, you know? 
and how they can, they can sense what is in each wine just by sniffing it. You guys ever known anyone like that? Mm -hmm. I don't. They, they take the time to savor that aroma. Well, Dr. Peel says this, can you imagine a group of Americans sitting around smelling wood at a party? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, think about this, guys. Have you ever been outside on a winter night? There's a smoke coming from a neighbor's fireplace chimney, chimney, and the aroma of that wood can return you to your childhood. Think about it. Isn't it's smell one of the most powerful things connected with memory? Absolutely. So, I mean, for me, you know, every time it happens, I'm thinking back to, to being at a campfire and, and cooking those s'mores, you know? chocolate and marshmallow and, and graham crackers. Now that would make me sick if I were to eat that today. But the memory, like you said, Sherry, it's powerful. Powerful. Okay. And then he talks about another custom. They, the, the Japanese have what they call a snow viewing party. A snow viewing party. Held on a night with a full moon someone who has a large picture window with a beautiful Japanese garden outside. Now imagine this. The guests gather, no cocktails, no social chatter, no chit chat. You simply sit and look through the picture window at this dark, bare trees with little flicks of snow on them, at the great rocks topped with snow, at the snowy ground. You spend an hour or two in silence, viewing the snow, and thinking and meditating. Then you rise and you bow as the Japanese do and you go home. And that's all. But you have had an hour of quiet fellowship with the sensitive, appreciative people. Life is good and you walk away thinking long thoughts about how lovely the world is. Think about that, guys. Two minutes 15 minutes. Like Sherry said, what if you did an hour? <laughs> and what about the Japanese, the incredible calm that they can get after a one or two hour snow viewing session? You know, it sounds crazy, but incredibly powerful because not only does just 15 minutes of that type of focus and appreciation and noticing does it increase your DHEA 100%, but it also produces a corresponding 30% reduction in cortisol. Remember, guys, this is just thank you. Mm. You know what? Gratitude stands the test of time. In a study of women at midlife, those who received positive mentoring when they were younger were much more likely to be mentors themselves nearly two decades later. The Russians say it like this, gratefulness waters old friendships and makes new ones sprout. And I know I have that feeling when I'm thinking about the old, reliable friends in my life and the new, dear ones as well. Now, when we're talking about health effects, guys, this is profound. Organ donor recipients who expressed gratitude, whether it was directly by stating it to their caregivers or their medical professionals or their donor, um, or indirectly in journals, even if they didn't have direct communication, they felt physically better and functioned at a higher level than those who did not. The scientists actually called it this. It was transpersonal spirituality. And again, you remember what? There's a reason I spent a little bit of time on that Japanese scenario. You see, transpersonal spirituality is just a big picture gratitude for the universe. Now, I, I am, remember what Thoreau said? I am thankful that I was born. Nothing more specific than that, but just spending time pondering the beauty and the power of being on a planet such as ours. Now, here's what I want you to ponder with that. What if, what if we were to take this concept, this one concept of gratitude, and what if we were to apply that routinely in recovery wards. What if? 
Well, guys, I tell you, whenever I have anyone in my life, I apply it directly. It's precisely what I counsel my clients, my family, my friends to do. You know, we spend gratitude time where we just sit down and we reminisce and we think about the positives. And when things go negative, we get that out of the system and we move on because the body responds physiologically to the brain creating these positive emotions. Okay? Positive thoughts have profound health impact. And get this, gratitude blesses the patient and the helper. Even people with chronic debilitating pain experience 25% improvement in high energy positive moods. They have a greater sense of feeling connected to others, and again, the better sleep and sleep quality. And that's, that's huge for someone in pain. These studies were actually spent on uh, uh, polio victims and people with MS. So if you can imagine a 25% improvement, even in that population, where they knew that they were going to be in pain, that the pain was not going to go away. They weren't going to die either. But they were just going to have to live with that pain. But they focused on something they could be grateful for. And get this, not only the patient could do it, but when caregivers wrote in their journal about something they could be grateful for, even in highly stressful situations. Those of you who have had a family member with Alzheimer's, um, that's a long, painful process incredibly, inc excruciatingly difficult. Well, these caregivers in this study did simple things such as write down, I am so glad that my dad remembered that Christmas was in December. Mm -hmm. You know? Couldn't remember her name anymore. But he had a moment of clarity where he remembered, ah, Christmas. And by being grateful of that, she was able to improve her own personal health. And guys, here's the bottom line. Thank you creates a better human race. When you feel grateful, you're more likely to nurture, care for, and contribute to the welfare of others. Thankful people, again, are more empathic, they're more forgiving, and they're more helpful. When you realize that in every situation, there's going to be something, there's going to be a grain somewhere that you can be grateful for, you know, that helps you forgive. It helps you put a different perspective on things. And here's, you know, there's, I always like to have a call of action. I always like to say, okay, what do you do with the information that you've been given? It's great information. You know, I've spent a lot of time putting all that together, pulling it together from all different areas of the world. But it's no good if it just sits there. You know, if all you have is notes from a PowerPoint, is that, is that ever going to impact your life? Well, here's the level I want to take it to. Here's my call to action. Because I like to discuss a concept called celebration. Because I believe that celebration is the way that we express gratitude. And I believe every moment that we express gratitude can be a celebration, whether it's big or small. It's what I call gratitude with an added zing. Um, great word in ebullience, a joy. You know, because if, here's what I believe, if gratitude is the unappreciated stepchild, then we have the power to change that, you know? We can be grateful for gratitude, we can put it on the pedestal, and we can give it the place of honor that it deserves. And why do we want to do that? Because again, when you feel that gratitude, you, you want to celebrate. You, there, <laughs> there's actually, you, you guys need to do a search on this, I didn't include it in the presentation, because it, it's a bit silly, but it's fun. Um, go on YouTube and search the gratitude dance. Oh, okay. that is so funny. Is that a hoot? Okay. And you just look at it, and, and you want to smile, you know. And whether you're smiling because, okay, that's just stupid, or, okay, that's fun, or, you know, you think, who in the world thought of this? <laughs> but you see Dr. McCullough on there even, some of you guys who follow his work. You know, there he is doing the gratitude dance. Okay, and that's, that's kind of my point here is that when you, when you feel grateful, when you're a grateful person, that celebration just builds up in you. And, and Sherry, getting back to your point about um, celebration and, and, and our, our gratitude and the impact that it has on other people, again, 
what it does, guys, is when you are experiencing gratitude, you're expressing gratitude, and other people see that, it creates this, this effect that, that I have, have referred to sometimes in my training. I say, I have a dream, and my dream is that, that the people, the community that I'm associating with and the impact that we're having jointly as a community, that an outsider will walk in and they will see us and they will say, I don't know who you are or what you're doing, but I want some of that. Okay? And that's the impact that a grateful outlook on life can have. It creates this circle of love. It moves us from fear to faith because if, if you know, if you know that the power of your thinking and the power of your thinking put into action through celebrating positive events, that can take you from fear to faith. You know that there's something you can do to positively impact your life and the lives of others. So if you're feeling tired, you know, honestly, I have, I have really struggled with an injury the past few days. I was telling Sherry earlier, I was so grateful <laughs> that my topic was gratitude. Mm. Because, you know, I have really had to push through. I've had to say, you know, this is important and I've got to do this and it doesn't matter what other life tragedy comes up or whatever, what other stress occurs, this is important. And guys, just jumping into the topic made me better. You know, I wasn't tired, I was inspired. It was so good. This is what Abraham Maslow says. We appreciate again and again, freshly and naively, the basic goods of life with awe pleasure, wonder, and even ecstasy. So here's Gratefulology Lesson 1, I call it. Targeted appreciation generates the highest return. And here's what I mean by that. When you get specific, when you celebrate with someone else the blessing that they have been in your life, that by far has the, is the greatest return on investment. Here's what the research says. Um, when, when the scientists had their students conduct what's called a gratitude visit, what they did was they had the students write out a thank you note to someone that they felt genuine gratitude for, but they had never expressed it to them. So guys, I, I actually want you to stop and think about that right now. I want you to think about someone in your life who's been an incredible blessing to you Someone that went out of their way. Someone who saw something in you. When other people were making fun of you or telling you that you were a no good loser or whatever it was. Maybe it was just someone that brought a meal to your family during a time when things were financially tough. But there's somebody in your life that's been a blessing. I want you to think about writing that down. Just a simple thank you. The more specific, the better. And think about being intentional about it. Think about writing down with detail. Mrs. Jones, I remember the time in second grade when I had to walk to school and my hands were frozen and you didn't make fun of me because I was the poor kid and I had to walk. But you just had everybody continue their work, and you came over and you rubbed my hands between your hands. And I'll never forget that, because you made me feel like I mattered. Whatever it is that your story is, think about writing that down. And then think about the ability to go to that person and be in front of them and give them that gift. Imagine what that would feel like. Well, here's what the science says. By a significant factor, this one action has the greatest positive effect on quality of life. And not only did it have the effect in the moment, but the profound impact you have on them will measurably bless you for weeks. When the scientists followed up with the students who actually participated in the gratitude visit, they experienced the positive physiological health benefits for one month following that visit. 
very, very powerful. You know, I'll share a personal story on that. Recently, my middle son is going to Avalon Christian University, which is my alma mater, and he's on the basketball team. Six foot six, five percent body fat. Um, you know, of course, gets that from me, guys. Those of you who know me don't laugh. Um, but anyway, he's uh, quite the athlete, okay? And he has been, for the first time, he's off campus, and he's living in an apartment. And for the first time, I go and see his apartment. It's a duplex, and he's quite proud of it. And I'm walking up, and he's telling me about this wonderful older couple that are his landlords and how, how generous they are to him and his roommate and what a wonderful, uh, nice couple they are. And I walk up, guys, and it is the former head of the Department of Human Communications where I went to school and got one of my degrees there at ACU. And so we catch up. We spend a little time chit-chatting. And as we're leaving, I, th I thought to myself, you know, and this was, this was weeks ago. This was before this topic came up. But I thought, you know, Dr. Brown deserves to hear this. I wonder how long, how many times he's heard the good stories. And I just stopped him. And I said, Dr. Brown, I've got multiple degrees. And I'm still pursuing another. But I want to tell you that the degree I got in human communication has served me more and better in my life than any degree I've ever received. And I just want to thank you for the persistence and the wisdom and the courage that you had to put together that department and to hire the people that you did and to have the impact that you've had on so many lives. And I just want you to know that. And guys, this beautiful 82-year-old man just had tears running down his cheeks. And he said, thank you so much for telling me that. You just have no idea how much that means. That's, you know, that was an impromptu gratitude visit. I didn't write a letter. I just took the opportunity in that moment. And I want you to understand, <laughs> friends, this is, this, is, this is an amazing part of gratitude because there's no time limit on thank you. And by that I mean this. Take time to honor the ones who celebrated you who've passed on. This is one of the most powerful things I do in my life now because for some reason, and, I, and you know who knows the reason why, but I've had a lot of deaths in my life in, in the past couple of years of people that are very dear and close to me. And one of those is a business partner, for example. Some of you may know Bob Phillips. And I spend time daily thinking about him and the joy that he was in my life and, and, and the, the impact that he had on so many and the positive effect. And guys, I honor him. In fact, one of the things that we did as a group, uh, our group of friends, was we took time out uh, before he passed to have what I called a joy party for him and to tell him how much he was loved and appreciated while he was still here. And when you do that, when you spend the time just to meditate, you know, again, take that minute right now. I know you guys out there have someone in your life that's no longer with you, and, and, and I know you wish they were. If they were a blessing to you, then they're missed. But if they're not physically present with us, you know, you can still express the gratitude to them and for their impact on your life just through that meditation. And here's a powerful one that I love to use. Today in my life, when I, when I take on important projects, when I try to step up and, and live up to the potential that God's given me, when I do that and I take on something that's of great significance, I always dedicate it to a special someone in my life. And usually it's someone who's passed on. Usually it's someone that I can honor through my living the legacy that they left. And guys, I will tell you, that will infuse your project with meaning. You will pursue your passion with such dedication and such purpose when you do that. And that is another way to express gratitude. So gratefulology lesson number two. After we move away from being that focused, direct to the person act of gratitude. Here's what the science teaches us about gratefulness. 
you need to savor the day. The ability to notice, appreciate, and savor life is a crucial determinant of well-being. Of well -being. And here, again, is why I took the time on that Japanese story that you guys might have thought uh, was really insane, because when are we ever going to do that in the Western world? Well, here's what happens to us in the Western world. We live this past-based life. It, it, we climb on what the researchers call a hedonic treadmill, where we're just focused on pleasure and the next pleasure and what can I get now. And it's kind of like a kid at Christmas and they're opening gifts and they've got so many gifts they're just tossing them right and left because they want to get to the next gift. You ever seen that or had that feeling? Mm -hmm. Well, here's what happens to us in our life is that we get good things. We are so blessed, particularly in America. We have no concept of what poverty is. You know? When, when pennies is what the average worker makes a day in third world countries, we have no clue how good we have it. But we get so used to it that we take it for granted. And that's why savoring is so important. Because you see, when we consciously focus on gratitude, it may help us subvert our own insatiability. That, mm. own, that, that treadmill for more, more, more. Got to have more, more, more. Got to have more. No, no. What, you, what you've got is enough. Where you are is where you're supposed to be right now and be grateful for that. <coughs> and guys, you know, there are two ways to savor. There's, there's what I call the big picture view. And those are the moments when you need to ask yourself this question. Will this really matter in the overall scheme of my life's purpose? I had one of these happen to me the other day where, of course, I was in a hurry. I get in line at the, uh, I think it was a, some restaurant picking up an order, and this lady was incredibly slow. She was new. She was training, and, you know, I was in a hurry. She was incredibly slow. And I, I just had to refocus. I just had to stop because I was getting irritated. I could literally feeling, feel my face flush. I could feel my heart rate increasing, okay? And I finally just had to say, Lord, does this really matter in the big picture? No, this five, is five minutes on the road going to make any difference? And it helped me focus into the moment and listen in to a delightful conversation and actually... Um, ended up getting some business cards and, and staying in contact with some people who were just there in the restaurant that were incredibly delightful people. But I wouldn't have noticed them if I hadn't kind of slapped myself in the face, metaphorically, <laughs> and said, Lori, it just doesn't matter in the big picture. And another way you can savor the day is to notice, again, like that Japanese example, how can I gain from the moment by being fully present? That's what all the research shows about meditation. That's the value in meditation is that, again, it gets that resonance. It gets that, that alignment in your body, gives it time to rest and get fully balanced. And do you know in those moments of, that could be frustration, you can change them to an opportunity for gratitude? How about when you get stuck in traffic, you know? <laughs> That's mm -hmm. a big one for me. Incredibly frustrating. Well, here's Gratefulology, lesson three. Written, consistent focus results in long-lasting benefit. Now, this is consistent with the science across all of the psychological sciences. When you write something down, it has a higher impact than if you just do it verbally. And there are a couple of reasons for that, probably. Um, the research shows, number one, when you write it down, the, the physical act of doing so actually engages a different part of your brain. And so it literally embeds it and implants it in a different way than if you just do something verbally. Okay. But number two, when you write something down, I mean, think about it. If I'm just talking, I can be off the cuff. I can just say whatever. I'm really not having to give a lot of thought to it. But when I write something down, and when I do it consistently, I really have to be more intentional, don't I? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can take a vague feeling and make you have to be more specific about it, like you were saying. Precisely, precisely. And that, the researchers think, is what, is, what gives this impact. And, and this gets us to um, the action step of, of the gratitude journal. And this is probably, probably the most frequently studied um, technique in the gratitude literature, writing down the joy, I call it. And when you reflect just once a day on your blessings, it has an immediate impact on your well-being. Now, 21 days is the typical study duration in these studies, although some of the studies were as short as one day, others one week, others 10 days, uh, some 30 days, but typically 21 days. But again, to point out, results were seen by using gratitude as small as two minutes a day, up to 15, and as little as one day. But to change behavior long term, and you guys have all heard this, it does take that 21 day to establish a habit, 21 days to really get it into your system that, uh, okay, okay, body, I really mean this. <laughs> I, I want my life to be different, so I'm going to behave differently. Okay? And that is the power of a gratitude journal. And remember what we talked about. You know, It doesn't have to mean big things. Little things that make you grateful. Food on your table, the right to vote. And, and this is uh, something that was interesting in the research as well, is that they did find that the people that were more successful and, and reaped the greater benefit from their gratitude journal were the ones that put some variety in there. So they didn't just go, you know, I'm grateful for my husband and I'm grateful for um, my, the, the house that I have and I'm grateful for my kids. And then day two, ditto, day three, ditto, day three. You, you see what I'm saying? What? What the researchers found was that you want to, again, spend that intentional time and focus really meditating and thinking about it. And after you write down what it is you're grateful for or who it is you're grateful for, then spend the time to really implant it in your head by writing down the why. Why am I grateful for them? What is it specifically that, that brings me joy about the thought of them, that makes me want to express gratitude to them in this journal? Now, before, actually, before I move on, um, Sherry, I know you and I were talking about, um, and, and I know you've had an experience in your life with a gratitude journal. Would, would you mind sharing that with everyone? Oh, sure. Okay, I was telling Lori that this has been six or seven years ago. I um, had this idea around Thanksgiving time that I wanted to make a list of, for my husband of all the things that I was grateful for about him. And so between Thanksgiving and Christmas, every day I would write things down that I was grateful for about him. And some of them were really important, big things, and some of them were little things like he always lets me choose what we're going to watch on TV. And some were comical and some were pretty intimate. And so um, by the time cr you know Christmas got here, the list had over 100 things on it. It was a pretty wow. long list. And I, I wrapped it up and I packaged it and I gave it to him as a Christmas present. And I'm, I know it had a tremendous, um, it was a huge blessing to him. But the, and that was my original intent was that it would be a gift to him, but I didn't realize what a gift I was giving myself by going through that process. And the thing I was telling Lori was it's been six or seven years now, and that, just that experience has had um, a lingering effect that I still feel incredibly grateful for my husband. And even you know, times, every relationship has got stress and ups and downs and this and that, and but that there's like a foundation of gratefulness now in my heart that always tends to overshadow anything else that's going on. So I am a firm believer in doing this. Awesome. And, you know, your, your experience verifies what the science says to you. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool. And, you know, costs you the price of paper and ink, you know. <laughs> Just an amazingly powerful investment. Well, here's lesson number four, and you guys will figure out by me. I usually like to call things down to what I call five fingers or less. You need to be able to cover a topic in uh, five fingers or less. 
so you know that we've only got two more to go at most. <laughs> but here's what the science of gratitude says. Even small thank yous matter. This is pretty fascinating, actually. Actually, A simple thank you, gracias, merci. All right? And here's what I mean by that. When you took the time to thank someone for giving directions, they were actually more willing to help again in the future. You know, that rings true, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, when you let someone in line uh, in front of you and they wave an acknowledgement, that feels pretty good. And you're like, but when they don't, you're like, well, that's fine. See if I do that again for a while, you know? So just the little gestures can have an impact. Look at this, social workers who get thank you letters from their, visit their clients more often. This is a real important, I always do this with customer service people because, again, they're constantly getting slapped and unappreciated. And when I get someone who's good, who's good, I will always get the name of their supervisor, typically an email, and I will send an email and follow up. Okay? And man, does that get me dividends. I don't do it to get the dividends, but it has an impact for them. They feel incredibly good. The supervisor feels good because they know they've got a worker that's doing their job. And I feel good because I've passed on a positive. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Did a lot of research on this, actually. You know, the, the waiters that actually write thank you, Sherry, on their little, uh, the little bill, uh, the research has shown that they actually get bigger tips because <laughs> it makes the diner feel good. You know, the fact that this person took the time to put a personal little note on their bill. And Sherry, this is getting to your point earlier. What about the impact that gratitude has on other people? Well, this was the most fascinating part of the research that I discovered, and it was also the most surprising to the scientists who did the research. Because gratitude has this empowering ripple effect. Third parties who hear a story of someone expressing gratitude and a positive impact it had creates a vicarious positive health benefit in the listener, and I love the term that psychologists use for this, it's, it, what they call it is they say that's elevation. You feel elevated when you hear it. So maybe if you're having trouble feeling grateful, go ask somebody else what they're grateful for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the importance of the stories, you know, uh, because when you listen to someone else and you hear uh, those stories. I mean, Sherry, you, you don't know my college professor, but how did you feel hearing that story about Dr. Brown and how my thanking him had an impact on him? Yes, well, I, and I can still picture the tear running down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, and so just by sharing that story with you, you don't have to pay me for it, you know, I'm not going to bill you or anything, but it, it literally does. It has this ripple effect, this positive effect when you just put it out there and share it. That is a really cool finding. And here's lesson number five. One of my favorites, and you'll see there a little picture of me with my son. <laughs> Refrain, reframe your life, repair your mood. And here's what the science of gratitude says about this. You know, you don't have to be a victim to current circumstances no matter how horrific they are. And here's why. Trauma survivors who score high on gratitude have significantly lower symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Hmm. And guys, for any of you who think, okay, yeah, but man, you, you just haven't experienced what I've experienced. You don't know what I've gone through. Man, I've really had it bad. Probably my favorite example, <clears throat> my most poignant mentor in this area, it's a gentleman who you guys, I'm sure, have heard of, and that's Viktor Frankl. And in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about being a victim, being a prisoner at Holo in Holocaust, at the concentration camps. And he talks about how he knew the people. You, you could pinpoint the people who are going to survive just by paying attention to their words and their behavior. And the ones who were praying, the ones who were thanking God for the small joys of the day, the ones 
who would see the sun and point out the positive of, of that ray of sunlight, you know, just the tiniest, minute details that they would focus in on. And he said, you, you knew. Those were the ones who would make it. And in contrast, the ones that just allowed themselves to get pulled in and focused in on the incredible horror. And there's no question it was incredible horror, you know? I mean, it, it was unfathomable what they were going through. But see, that was a circumstance they didn't control. What they did control was their attitude towards it. And when they chose gratitude, in many instances, it gave them life. So that's the power. You see, it's life-giving. But here's the thing about life, you know. Life isn't always rosy, is it? In fact, life sometimes can be lousy, you know. <laughs> it, it, it really is about the spilled milk, right? And we all have experienced that. But it just depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Because that little kitten that spilled milk looks really lovely, huh? <laughs> and life, you know, can be incredibly irritating. Uh, you know, I just finished, I always get an extension, so I just finished my tax return October 15th. And boy, that just, and, and I have, you know, many, many clients that I've worked with, and that is an irritation, you know, having to fill that form out and going through that process. But I will also tell you, I have other clients, and it's pretty amazing to watch the change of perspective when they realize that they're getting a refund. <laughs> you know, they can be quite inspired when they change their perspective and look at, okay, uh, this did have a good side to it. You know, life can be frustrating. And have you ever felt, felt like you've been in traffic like that? Mm -hmm. uh, boy, I have. <laughs> Those of you in L.A. are going, yes, every day. Every moment of every day. And that can be incredibly frustrating. But, you know, when you put on a different lens, when you have a different perspective, it can kind of be fun. This, this little picture I pulled from uh, a, a mayor in Illinois who was trying to have a positive impact on traffic control. And so he just put up this little sign, stop in the name of love. I, I must add, in the interest of full disclosure, it did get him a little, in a little trouble with the highway department. They didn't find it too humorous. But, uh, you know, he was, he was looking to put a different perspective on things, right? So yeah, life can be fun if you're looking through the right lens. And you know what, guys? Life's not only lousy, irritating, frustrating, but frankly, sometimes it can be just plain evil. These are pictures of my uh, then two-year-old niece, Kyla. And when a baby girl is diagnosed with cancer, third stage, there's just no other word for it. You know, it's evil. But I will tell you what this little girl taught me. Because when I go and stay with her at the hospital, and when I, you know, we, we trade off time as family members being with her. And being with her, watching my family minister to her, I tell people it's been the best of times and the worst of times. Because, you know, it's evil. What, what, those cancer cells do to her body and what frankly what the treatment has done to her body is evil it's harsh it's hard but what maybe Kyla has taught me is that life is also exquisite because in the midst of all that pain and guys I need to tell you when you're two to four years old you don't need to know what a morphine drip is, you know. You don't deserve to understand what not being able to meet, eat through your mouth means because removing the tumor meant that you had to eat through a G button. But this is baby Kyla in the middle of all that. Have you ever seen a more beautiful smile? You know? Life is evil, but through her eyes, 
life is exquisite. And so I'm grateful for her eyes. I'm grateful for my mom that you see up there with Kyla because it's really made her so beautiful. It's just brought out the beauty in her. And we as a family, you think we're not looking forward to Thanksgiving because you see now baby Kyla has been through two years of therapy and she's cancer free. Mm -hmm. And so we get to give thanks for our family. Gratitude for life. You know, when you frame it, it's your choice. How you choose to frame it is your choice. But I want you to know that with your choice, you control your health, your happiness, your quality of life. How amazing is that? Two to 15 minutes a day, free of charge. How incredible is that? It's a new twist, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, guys, you know, I'm going to wrap up here. And, and forgive me for not, you know, having the engraved invitations, but in today's Internet world, I thought this would be a little bit more efficient. So I wanted to cordially invite you, Sherry and, and Dr. David and I want to cordially invite you to the grand opening of the Building Strength Gratitude Gym. You know, I was looking at the comment by the UT Houston doctor earlier, and I thought, why not? Why don't we create a gratitude gym? Because if those of you might have remembered, Jorge Cruz, he had this little workout routine a few years ago that was wildly popular. <laughs> it was eight minutes in the morning. <laughs> well, this is, this is my challenge to you guys. What, what if we did two minutes in the morning? What if you did ten minutes at night? What if? What if you were to intentionally give 60 seconds of your day here and there to gratitude? Can you imagine building up a bank account of happiness because you were grateful for life every day? Well, that's what we're going to have. We're going to be setting up a website, Sherry and David and I, and we're going to invite you to it. We're, we want you to be charter members <laughs> of our club. And guys, for those of you who want to do that, I'd like for you to send an email to me, my personal email address. And I do get, you know, a volume of mail, so I want, it would be helpful to me if you could put in the subject line, Gratitude Gym. And then that way we'll know that you want to be included, because what we're going to have is we're going to have an online gratitude journal where you can actually spend the time and, and write it down in that format if you choose to. We're going to be sending you, again, as our gift, uh, some daily quotes and, and thoughts about gratitude, because trust me, there are many of them, and they are powerful. We're also going to have some other free gifts, little little ebooks, some uh, possibly some more trainings and some audio messages for you. Again, because we really believe and we're committed to the concept of gratitude and building strength. Yes. And probably the thing I'm most excited about, and this gets to Sherry's point about about elevation, <laughs> because. Guys, do you understand what we can accomplish if we as a community, number one, engage in these positive acts of gratitude, and number two, if we publish them, if we create a forum and in a community where we share them, and I can read about what someone in South Africa did to express gratitude today, or if I can read about someone in Maine and the choice that they made to be grateful today. Because that's what we're going to have. We're going to have a forum where you can log in and actually leave your comments and make it interactive. And, and for those of you, you know, who, who really want to be a part of this, when you find something about gratitude, send it to us. Let us share it. Mm -hmm. You know, because the power of us is so much more exponentially stronger than the power of one. So I really, really am excited about this. It's going to be an ongoing project that we have. Um, and lastly, I just want to thank you guys. Those of you who have, who have the initiative, particularly during a holiday week, to take the time 
and, and invest in yourself and, and, and to think enough of me that you think it would be worth your time. Thank you. I really, it really means a lot to me. and it, it really does touch me. And frankly, it energizes me <laughs> because it's people like you uh, that I want to hang with. It's people like you that I want to be a part of because we are being the change. And that really is what these webinars are all about. So, Sherry, with that, I'll turn it back to you and maybe questions or um, whatever. So just let me know if there's anyone that has any questions or comments or follow-up. Okay. So just as a reminder, you, there is the question box where you can type something in if you want to leave a question or a comment. We've had some people typing in just thank you, great meeting, thanks for the information. Um, just to let you know how grateful I am for this webinar. I've got to join the gym. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, Lori. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, guys, I look forward to our ongoing dialogue because, you know, this, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's this, this because it's free, um, <laughs> does not diminish the power. I, I really want you to grab hold of the potential that, that we have with this concept of thankfulness. And, you know, blessings on your holiday. I hope this Thanksgiving has deeper meaning because you know the difference you can make um, with your thankfulness. And, and again, Sherry, thank you and David and, and everyone for, for being a part of this. Yes, thank you, Lori. Thanks, Absolutely. Mama. Right. Thanks so much. You there, David? And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay. Well, I just, I just wanted to say, mention, uh, Lori, you, you said something about uh, uh, in the recovery room that what if we were able to train our patients to start off that, I mean, right during in the recovery room to start um, getting them exercise in this whole process of, of, of giving thanks. I mean, that would, that would be so much better than just sticking the TV in front of them and having them watch CNN and the other news stations, which pretty much gives them a lot, a lot more bad news and a lot less to thank you. To, 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 exactly. To thank you. Mm, exactly. So, uh, so thank you so much. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you know, you know, you know this, but we have uh, people calling in, so we don't, we can't see that they're they are on the webinar, but they they're calling in. And I just had an email from someone in La Jolla, San Diego. She runs a I think it's a gratitude clinic or something. I, oh, I don't know awesome! What it is, and she was she was frantic at first because she couldn't log log on, but she's listening by by phone now, and she's like, she says, Lori is she is so beautiful. On let me read this real quick to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm listening by phone. Lori is delightful. It's wonderful information for me. And she says, Ms. Ba, and she's a geront gerontologist. What's that? What's a gerontologist? Gerontologist, gerontologist, I'll bet. G E R O N, is that it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the study of the elderly. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, in fact, that was one of the things that I studied in college, and and took took great delight. And in, in, in fact, it's it's a topic that I am going to be um, presenting some information on because we, as a society, really just do not respect the the incredible wisdom and value of of the elderly population. Right, right. You know, and, and I think I'm probably doing that um, because I'm fast progressing to be in that population, so it's probably self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, um, a lot of the, the age, the um, long-lived, that's really the, the right pronunciation, but we say long-lived, but a lot of the long-lived long cultures around the world, um, and what they found out is that many of them, have a cultural practice that respects, places a lot of respect for the elders. Yes, exactly. And that, in a way, it helps older people to feel that they are not just a, just not just a number. They they they, they, they celebrate growing old as a most to in our culture in this country, where when you get old, you become irrelevant, pretty That's much. Right. Become what they call it in some yep. cases. I mean, kid, I mean, young people can be so disrespectful of the elderly people in this country and with other Western societies that gr growing old is no longer a, a joy to many of them. Right. And so I agree with you. It's 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 uh, I mean, culture cultural respect for the aged is is is, is really a, 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 a an encouragement 
for you to, to, for, to people to want to grow older, so Absolutely. to speak. Absolutely. Well, we well, should make that a part of our culture, right. building strength webinars. Hey there. You there? Agreed. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing that with me, David. That was that's really touching. I appreciate that. David, did we lose you? I think you did. I think we did. But uh, oh, okay, uh, fine. Well, 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 you you were you about to say something? We should what? No, no, no. Oh, oh sure, he was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When when you were talking about the different cultures, I said, well, we should make honoring the aging a part of the culture of building strength webinars. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great idea. All right. Well, uh, thanks again. I anything else we want, we want to uh, finish up? I don't oh, think so. Join the gym, you guys. Join the gym. Hey, by the way, uh, the, the lady, her name is, uh, she, she, she wanted, she's uh, an authentic happiness coaching graduate. Uh, she says, uh, I was able to see and be with Dr. Frankel on his last lecture. My favorite Wow. Book. Why don't you ask her to call me? I interviewed Helen Keller as a child of 10. How fascinating. So I'm going to forward this to you, Lori. Excellent. You and her can get together, all right? How about Great. That? That's okay. fabulous. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, anything else, Sherry? I think that's it. OK, Thank blessings, you. guys. Good night. Right, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. You too. God bless.